NASA's space shuttle program was revolutionary as it was the first major step at regularizing space travel and introducing the concept of rocket reusability. However, one realm in which it was not revolutionary was cost. Despite one of the main promises of the space shuttle being cheaper spaceflight, like with most other government-sponsored programs, this space shuttle program fell flat on its face, clocking in at a total of $209 billion, or $1.6 billion per launch. To put this in perspective, the SpaceX Crew Dragon costs $209 million per launch, meaning that with $209 billion, NASA could have launched 1,000 Crew Dragons as opposed to the 134 space shuttle flights. On top of this, SpaceX is aiming to eventually push down their per launch cost of their new rocket, Starship, to just 2 million. So why did it cost NASA so much and why are SpaceX's solutions so much cheaper? Before we get into this video, I want to preface that this video is by no means intended to hate on NASA or any of their outstanding accomplishments. Spaceflight wouldn't be what it is today without NASA, and this video is simply supposed to highlight the operational differences between NASA and SpaceX that have led to an economical viability gap. With that being said, one of the biggest mistakes of the space shuttle program was being too ambitious. Instead of improving upon the Apollo design and figuring out ways to cut costs, NASA decided to construct a brand new vehicle basically from scratch. Aside from a brand new design, NASA packed in as much technology as they could into the space shuttle, which made it one of the most complex rockets ever built. This led to some pretty hefty development costs, but more importantly, this made repairs and maintenance a nightmare. During the idea development phase, many simpler designs were suggested, and looking back, an incremental upgrade would have likely been a much better choice as it would have significantly reduced the number of unanticipated issues. Next up, the space shuttle program was run for way too long. Originally in 1972, then NASA Administrator James Fletcher proposed to Congress that the shuttle would cost $5.15 billion to develop and boast a per launch cost of just $10.5 million. NASA was actually pretty spot on with the development costs. They did slightly overrun the proposed $5.15 billion, but that's basically a given with every new development. Very quickly though, it became clear that the space shuttle would cost a minimum of 20 times their projected per launch cost at over $200 million. While very high, that's actually okay. They tried something new and it didn't quite pan out. What blew this out of proportions, however, was that they originally only planned on using the space shuttle for 10 to 15 years. But as we all know, this ended up being two to three times longer at 30 years. At the same time though, this is not all NASA's fault. Around the time that the space shuttle was supposed to retire was when the International Space Station construction went into full gear. The ISS was actually approved during the Reagan presidency in 1984, but the planning and development phase far exceeded what they originally anticipated. Despite garnering approval in 1984, the final design of the ISS was not picked until 1993, and it wasn't until 1998 that the space shuttle was first used to launch ISS elements into orbit. At the time, the space shuttle was the only vehicle that could carry many of the ISS parts into space. And given all of the delays already, NASA wasn't going to design a new rocket to take these parts into orbit. Consequently, NASA was forced to continue using the very expensive space shuttle until the end of the ISS construction. The ISS ended up adding nearly two decades onto the lifespan of the space shuttle program and tens of billions if not over a hundred billion dollars onto the cost. To make things worse, the International Space Station is quickly reaching the end of its lifetime. NASA says that the space station can easily last 30 years if not much more. However, the lifespan of the space station itself is irrelevant as NASA plans to step away from supporting the space station by 2024 
in order to divert the funding to other projects. So, at the end of the day, it's pretty questionable if it was worth running the space shuttle program for another two decades to build the ISS from an economical standpoint. From an achievement standpoint, however, the ISS is no doubt one of the greatest feats of humanity. So, it can definitely be argued that the space shuttle's exorbitant cost was justified as it made the ISS possible. And finally, that brings me on to the last and probably the biggest drawback of the space shuttle, which was that it lacked a clearly defined goal. Yeah, it was meant to create sustainable space travel, but this clearly wasn't the primary goal as we likely would have seen a simpler, more economically friendly design if this was the case. At the same time, public excitement started to dwindle as America had already gotten people onto the moon and beaten the USSR in their own race. From the viewpoint of the average individual, the next big space achievement that would get them excited was getting to Mars, not lowering the cost of space travel. Though lowering the cost is crucial to getting to Mars, for the average person, it's not that exciting. As a result, the space shuttle didn't really have a purpose. It didn't have a clearly defined goal, it didn't have anyone to beat, and it didn't garner massive public support like the Apollo program. Even the construction of the ISS using the space shuttle was mostly an afterthought. And this left the space shuttle just randomly wandering in the wilderness of space. So that's some of the main reasons that the space shuttle failed. But how did SpaceX correct all these mistakes and actually bring down the cost of space travel? Well, starting off, one of the key advantages for SpaceX is that they just had one goal. Reduce cost without compromising safety. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. Sure, they have other aspirations like getting to Mars and providing speedy travel within the Earth. But what do all of these center around? Reducing cost. As Elon Musk has said, most government space organizations have spent decades focusing on just performance as opposed to reducing cost. And as government funding of space organizations has been on a downward trend, this has become more of a concern. Aside from this, a major benefit for SpaceX is that they are run like a startup as opposed to NASA which is more run like the government. A large benefit of any government job is that individuals are usually not overworked as government organizations stick pretty closely to the 40 hours a week schedule and this is also true when it comes to NASA. NASA employees are expected to work 40 hours per week Monday through Friday during regular business hours of 8am to 4.30pm. This is ideal for employees and should be how all organizations are run but this is obviously not the case. At SpaceX, the average employee works a minimum of 60 hours per week with work extending into the 80 to 100 hour range on a regular basis. Oftentimes, this even crosses the 100 hour threshold during important launches and recoveries. Working weekends and shifts around the clock are also quite common. Of course, all of these engineers and manufacturing workers are doing this voluntarily as they can likely easily find a less demanding and higher paying job elsewhere. But all of them have been sold into the vision of SpaceX and are fine with dedicating that many hours into work. Whether this is healthy or safe from a psychological and mental perspective, this no doubt significantly reduces cost as each employee is nearly twice as productive as the average NASA employee. And the last competitive advantage for SpaceX compared to NASA is of course competition. SpaceX is a private company and thus they aren't handed a set amount of money from the government on a yearly basis. As a result, SpaceX has to compete with giants like Boeing and NASA themselves to win contracts from NASA as well as keep investor confidence high. With such pressure on a regular basis, it's really no wonder why the SpaceX team has been working so hard to bring down the cost of space travel. As much as people like to say that the only person you should try to beat is yourself, it's no doubt that having tangible competition increases the pressure to succeed and continue improving. This was the case with NASA in the 1960s and is the case with SpaceX today. With all that being said, 
the main reasons the space shuttle program cost so much was being overly ambitious, running too long, and a lack of competition and purpose. Meanwhile, the economical success of SpaceX can mostly be attributed to a clear vision, startup culture, and a high level of competition driving them forward. But really, at the end of the day, both of these organizations have been and will continue to be crucial to future space exploration and colonization. So it's awesome that they were able to partner up and get to a position in which they can both constantly learn from each other and improve themselves moving forward. Who do you guys think is more revolutionary for space travel? The ones who made it possible or the ones who are making it viable? Comment that down below. Also, if you guys appreciate this analysis, then make sure to drop a like and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari and I'll see you guys on the next one.